So let me pull this back into our current, current reality. Instead of just looking to heaven, let's talk about what that reports into our lives today for two different crowds. First, I want to talk to our single crowd here for a minute. Interestingly, in Luke cha- or Matthew chapter 19, Jesus said, For there are eunuchs who were born that way, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and there are those who would choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. Of course, eunuchs don't have any kind of capacity uh, for sexuality the way that it was originally designed, and there are some people who just choose to live as singles their whole life for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And in a very matter-of-fact, non-judgmental, no-hang-up kind of way, Jesus just says, you should accept this. This is a good thing. And remember, Jesus himself, as he says this, is a 33-year-old single man who is a virgin until the day he died. And Jesus was completely fulfilled. He had no gaps in his life. Paul says the same exact thing, that it is good to be single for the sake of the kingdom because your focus can be on Christ and you're not distracted with your family life. In other words, all of those things that sexuality is pointing to can be fully fulfilled in the person of Jesus. I know some people who are single and who are celibate and who are really doing this right. What they find is that the transcendence of connection and hope and unity and all the things that they experience can be found in Christ more than it can be found in sex. They find that their connection can be deep and profound through friendships and service and music and nature. They find they can experience a union with Christ right now in deep ways that point us towards the future. You can be completely fulfilled in all the things that sex points to without sex. And this is good news for celibate singles. Pursue Jesus and experience a pure form of the life that God intended you without sex that sex was meant to be a pointer to. On the flip side, I know that there are many people out here who are singles but who are not celibate and aren't experiencing these things. Because each moment when you run from God's plan, you put one more brick in a wall that makes it harder to experience God. There are many who are having sex with lots of people, and yet they're very alone. In fact, I'm convinced that the more partners you have, the more alone you feel deep on the inside. That's for singles. For married couples, married couples, enjoy your sexuality as a pointer to heaven. Stay true to your spouse. Share yourselves with each other in the deepest of ways. Enjoy your sexuality as this is this and this is that. If it's going well for you, well, thank God and enjoy the transcendent power that's there. But the key to everything, marriage is not the key to the transcendent experience with God. Because there are some married people out there who are living in separate bedrooms or maybe in the same bed but never intimate or maybe they accomplish the act of intimacy but it's just biology and they feel profoundly alone because they're selfishly pursuing their own pleasure instead of working to gratify the other as the Bible teaches. Now, Jesus affirms marriage and sex. Don't get me wrong in this. He goes to weddings. He quotes Genesis. He celebrates all that should be celebrated. But he sees marriage and therefore sex as not the ultimate state. It's a part of our temporary state. Sex and marriage and husbands and wives all appear to Jesus to be quite temporary. They're a pointer to a bigger reality that we're going to experience that God has for us. The bottom line for married people is to pursue Jesus to experience this reality. Same as singles. Above all else, pursue Jesus. Enjoy your sexuality. Do it exclusively. Do it biblically. And let it point you to something bigger. 